I've said many times, I don't uh, walk around this building being worried about a motion to vacate. I have to do my job. We, we did. I, I've done here what I believe to be the right thing, and that is to allow the House to work its will. And as I've said, you do the right thing and you let the chips fall where they may. So in today's Republican Party, doing the right thing could cost you your job. Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene is blasting Speaker Mike Johnson as a, quote, lame duck after the House approved much needed aid for Ukraine. And when it comes to her push to remove him as speaker, well, she's now saying, well, she'll let the f her fellow Republicans hear from their constituents before moving forward with a motion to vacate. Back with us is Congressman Jasmine Crockett. Congressman, let me just pull up the, the cover of the New York Post. It features this image of Marjorie Taylor Greene with the headline, Niet Moscow Marjorie. <laughs> GOP rebels defeated as House passes $61 billion in Ukraine aid. I don't even have a question. Just looking for your reaction. <laughs> you know what? I very rarely agree with the New York Post. <laughs> But I do today. Um, yeah, seriously. I mean, you know, we were in oversight this week. Um, it was a powerful and amazing hearing that the Democrats, again, owned. And it was interesting that she consistently, historically, has tweeted out re um, um, Russian propaganda. I mean, literally quote tweeting out like Russian mm -hmm. propaganda. And the fact that she thinks that she's on the right side of history is beyond me. I mean, I'm, when I first got to the house, I thought, is she really this slow or is it a game? And I've decided she's really this slow. Well, I'm not going to disagree with that. Um, <laughs> the, the reality, the reality, I think, for me, uh, is in a, a number of areas. One, in the visual of the speaker coming out to the bank of microphones, in a moment like this, there were no other Republicans around. No leadership, no, no House leadership. No, no House leadership, no members, no rank-and-file members. The starkness of that moment struck me uh, because it's... It, it was almost as if he was like, I'm going to walk this walk by myself, and I want to be very clear about why this, why I'm doing this. And, and so that was one. The, the second um, was the Marjorie Taylor Greene, you know, show you behind uh, moments that she had uh, throughout the day, the, you know, the you know, thumbs down and, and, and the, the loud noise. How do, when, when you're sitting there and you're actually trying to get the business of the country done, how do you get around all of that noise so that you can get to a moment with the leadership to actually get the paperwork done, um, despite all the other drama that's happening around you? For example, when the Ukrainian flags came out, you have, uh, you know, members, you know, Th Republican members, thumbs down, telling them to put the damn flags down. Mm -hmm. um, but they weren't upset about the, you know, decorum of Marjorie Taylor Greene with the MAGA outfit mm -hmm. at the State of the Union. So how, how does the House reconcile itself? Are you just muddle through until November, or do you, you just try to find one or two more things to get done? You know, uh, Democrats have consistently said, we are here to work. We're here to work for the American people. And every single piece of foundational legislation that has been passed, it's been passed because Democrats have carried it. We have carried the load. And I know that the American people see this, and I know that the American people are thinking, how in the heck did we allow the Republicans to be the ones that were in control of the House. There's been nothing but drama as it relates to the speakerships and the even the threat of kicking out another speaker and throwing the House into turmoil, especially as we see the um, hostilities growing across the world. It is not a time to play games. And to be frank, it's never a time to play games as a U.S sitting member of our Congress, but that's exactly what we're getting from the MAGA branch. And I, again, have to applaud the speaker because he has decided it's time to be an adult. And that's one thing that McCarthy really struggled with, was actually deciding that I'm not only going to be a, uh, an adult in what I do, but also in what I say. And Speaker Johnson has decided that he's going to do that. Now, if that cost him his job, I think that the American people are smart enough to know that it's not the Democrats' fault, but it's MAGA's fault. And ultimately, uh, I think that he knows how to work his way to maybe holding on to his job. I, I we'll think see. the speaker's going to be fine, honestly. I, you I do? Think, I do. 
Well, you know, I, I mean, the, Politico had a piece, I think, that kind of speaks to that. It notes that um, uh, Democrats have signaled that they will help save him, as in Speaker Johnson, if there's a formal referendum on his speakership. That is exactly the type of bipartisan rescue mission that many Republicans predicted would have ultimately doomed McCarthy if eight Republicans hadn't successfully voted him out on the first try, uh, uncharted speaker territory. You know, I think that this is, yes, Mike Johnson did do the right thing on this. I am waiting to see if this is just a moment or if this is true movement, because I, I, I he did go down to Mar-a-Lago not a week and a half ago and, and stood with Donald Trump, who is an, an unelected individual. He's a former president who literally is, seems to be holding uh, the House Republican caucus by the arm. Unelected, <laughs> multi-indicted individual. Exactly. So I just, I'm just, I'm, I'm wondering if this is a, just a moment or if this is true movement for Mike Johnson and evolution. And then secondly, I also think this is a, is a triumph for the American people, but it really shows the depth, I think, of the president, President Biden, and uh, Democratic leadership in the House. They have outmaneuvered consistently Mike Johnson and Republicans every single time in this 118th con Congress, I think, Congresswoman. I think it's a moment. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to get so excited. Um, and those Democrats that have gotten out and said what they're going to do and that kind of stuff, listen, we follow our leadership. So they may have said that they're going to vote for him. Now, when I say I'm not voting for him, I, I stand by that. <laughs> uh, I only vote for Leader Jeffries uh, if we have to go through this again. But he has to get to the table with Leader Jeffries for Leader Jeffries to then allow different Democrats to actually go out and do something. We don't do things for you or save you because you did the bare minimum of doing your job. We've got to get something out of this. Listen, we know that the Republican policies that have been pushed thus far are failures. And so the only thing that we can do is when he is in a time of need, that is our time to negotiate. That is our time to make sure that we can push through and get something as well. You know, doing the decent thing as allies and friends of various nations and countries, that's just doing the bare minimum. That's what we did. We did the bare minimum, just like getting mm. um, through our budget. That is the bare minimum. It took us an extra six months. Yeah. So we don't yeah. reward doing the bare minimum. The bare minimum, very important for the people of Ukraine. Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett, thank you for doing more than the bare minimum and coming to <laughs> be with right. us this morning. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on Get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.